pagpapala po mga kapatid na wa ay uh, abutin tayo ng oras na ito na tumatamasa ng pagpapala, kalinga, pagmamahal, yakap ng ating Panginoon. At sa inyong lahat, greetings, magandang magandang panahon para po ang ating muda ay nawa ay ma-lift up ng Espiritu at ang ating puso ay mapuno ng pag-asa, mapuno ng pananalig at ng kagalakan. Sa kabila ng mga, in, mga inconveniences na of course we pray ay temporary at di naman magtatagal. Naging ugali na natin na mag-aral ng mga salita mula sa Biblia sa ganito mga oras at yan din ang gagawin natin sa sandaling ito. Ang ating pag-aaral ngayon, pinamagatan natin Get Detoxed by Jesus. Matanggal ang mga impurities, ang mga kalat sa ating espiritu, sa ating uh, emosyon, sa ating puso, sa ating katawan. Mark 1, 21-22 They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching, because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. So, ang binasa natin sa Mark was very, very emphatic. Jesus taught with authority. Hindi yung parang kinabisa lang yung kanyang pinag-aralan, nabasa lang sa balutan ng kinapay, o napulot lang kung kanino, may authority, may truth, may power. Jesus thought out of the box, obviously, kasi kung he thought within the box, hindi walang napansin na authority, walang napansin na kakaiba. So Jesus thought out of the box of the teachers of the law. Out of the box of the law. Purgang-purga na kasi ang mga Israelita sa mga itinuturo ng mga teachers of the law, ng mga Pharisees, yun na lang lang yun, paulit-ulit, rewind ng rewind, replay ng replay. Wala na silang masabing, wow, what a great teaching with authority. Ngayon, si Jesus, nung nagturo, yun ang naigulalas nila. Mark 1, 23-24 Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an impure spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Giruin ninyo, gusto nyo bang mag-worship, mag-Bible study, tas may katabi kayo na possessed. This was exactly what was happening in their fellowship. Balik sila ng balik doon, dasal lang dasal, aral lang aral, pero merong possessed. At yung possessed na yun, hindi tinatabla na pinag-aaralan nila. Possessed pa rin. Hindi nawawala yung impure spirit sa kanya, nandun pa rin. So talagang, Walang kalatoy-latoy itong pananalig na ito na ginagawa nila, yung mga katuroan, at yun nagtuturo. At sabi ng mga spirits, Have you come to destroy us? What do you want with us? So hindi siya nag-iisa. Sinong kakampi ng evil spirits or impure spirits na ito? Sino? Sino-sino ang kasama niya? Mark 1, 25-26 Be quiet! said Jesus sternly, Come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. Simply lang si Jesus, kasi may authority, may power, hindi niya kailangan ng histrionics, hindi niya kailangan ng drama, hindi niya kailangan ng kung ano mga kaartihan. Sabi lang niya, Come out of him. At talagang umalis, but not without creating a little more disturbance. May mga tilitili pa at sigaw-sigaw na sumama at kasabay ng kanyang paglabas doon sa tao. Now, the work of Jesus is to drive out impure spirits, impurities, contaminants, kasi dapat pure ang ating espiritu. Pagka hindi ito pure, siya ay may kasama, hati, magulo, kaya meron tayong mga kasabihan, hati ang loob, sira ang loob, kasi may kahati. Dapat ang Diyos lang, ang laman ng ating espiritu, ng ating puso, ng ating isip. Now, impure spirits could be literal, mga spirit talaga, or could be symbolic of thoughts and mental emotional state. Maraming mga sinasabi dyan sa New Testament na possessed, may demon, may spirit, na pag in sa mga psychiatrist, ma-identify nila as acute, 
depression. In other words, because in those times, hindi pa nila alam yung acute depression, hindi nila alam at wala naman silang clinical psychiatry, lahat na lang ng tao na medyo kakaiba ang behavior, kakaiba ang itsura, kakaiba ang ginagawa, sinasabi na agad nila na possessed. Maaring meron talaga mga possessed, pero maaring marami doon talagang mga depressed lamang. So ano mga thoughts? Yung mga yan na pwedeng magmukha kang possessed, pero depressed ka pala. Thoughts that give doubts, scare, anger, makes one bitter, thoughts that enslave, torture, pollute, thoughts that destroy personality. And interestingly, this kind of thoughts doesn't come only from the devil. It can come from warped and distorted and twisted religiosity. Kaya maraming religious people, yung intensely religious, depressed. In fact, some psychiatrists will tell you, if they will tell you, na marami silang pasyente, religious leaders. Kasi nga, ang dami-daming pretense, hypocrisy, pressure, guilt ng religion. Kaya pagka ikaw yung nasa ganong klaseng un-Jesusness, madedepress ka nga at mapagkakamala kang possessed. Have the words and teachings of Jesus drive those thoughts out of your system kung ikaw ay ganyan ang kalagayan. Get yourself and others detoxified by Jesus. Talaga madedetox ka ni Jesus kung maraming toxins dyan sa loob ng iyong personality kasi toxic ang iyong lifestyle, lalong-lalo kung toxic ang iyong religiosity. Mark 1, 27-28 The people were also amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. Bakit nga hindi siya sisikat at mababalita na kapag papalayas ng ganito mga uri ng espirito, nakakapagpabago ng personalidad. Jesus got known for His new teachings, not for repeating the old, not for replaying the old, not for repurposing the old. New ang teaching niya. Not just a repetition of the traditional teachings, but definitely outside of their traditional teachings. Yun si Jesus, known for newness. Kung si Jesus ay may mga kasama, baka katiya ka hindi conservative siyon, kundi yung mga progressives. Kung merong isang mesa siyang pipiliin, samahan, nakakatiya ka hindi sa conservatives, kundi doon sa mga progressive ang utak. Mark 1, 23-24. Reviewin natin. Sabi, just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an impure spirit cried out, This person in their synagogue, in their religious community, possessed and tortured by an impure spirit in spite of their religion or because of their religion. This person in their synagogue and religious community na hindi na palaya, hindi na disinfect, na purify ng synagogue, ng old teachings, ng traditional teachers. What does it say? Walang power. Walang authority yung sinagod na magpalaya. Nandun na lang, kasakasama nila araw-araw. O baka kaya nagkaganon dahil nandun araw-araw. Mark 1, 27-28, kung narinuhin natin, the people were also amazed that they asked each other, What is this? A new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to impure spirits and they obey Him. The old teachings of the synagogue, which really means the old teachings of the temple and the priests, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees, did not have power or authority to drive out impure spirits. Para lang habit, turo lang ng turo, pero walang talab, walang effect, hindi nakakalaya yung oppressed. So the old teachings could be the very cause, the aggravator, of the spiritual impurities. 
Kasi ang daming bawal. Ang daming pulis. Ang daming parusa. Ang daming chismis. Ang daming espionage. Ang daming report. Ang daming litisan. At ang daming batuhan hanggang mamatay. Bakit ka nga hindi ba eh, mapupuno na impure spirits? Bakit ka nga hindi mapupuno ng takot, ng guilt, ng fear, hanggang magkaroon pa ng clinical depression? Pagka ganyan ang iyong religious orientation. Impure spirits could be thoughts that give doubts, scare, thoughts that could anger, thoughts that could make one bitter, thoughts that enslave and torture, pollute, destroy personality. This could be damages inflicted by twisted religiosity. We're not saying that it is, but very possible that it could be. These impure spirits could be thoughts and beliefs and value systems, personalities created by oppressive, repressive, and punitive old religious teachings and teachers. Kasi yan sila. Kung happy naman ang Diyos sa teachings ng synagogue, ng temple, ng law, ng teachers of the law, and Pharisees, bakit pa ipapadala si Jesus? So obviously, unhappy ang Diyos, kaya niya ipinadala si Jesus para ituwid yun. Kaya itong religious system ang pumatay kay Jesus. So talagang magkakontra ang daladala ni Jesus sa mensahe at yung mensaheng pauso ng temple. As we have said, hindi lahat ng demonic possession ay literal. Many cases show signs and symptoms of acute depression. Maraming very religious people suffer from depression if the teachings they embrace instill guilt, fear, and emotional imprisonment. Hindi nila masabi ang gusto, hindi magawa ang gusto, hindi matingnan ang gusto, hindi mapahingan ang gusto, laging nagpapanggap, nagpukunwari, dahil laging mapapagalitan, mauusig, mababato. So ang daming guilt kasi tinuro ang puro mag-guilty ka na lang, mag-guilty ka, mag Maraming fear, kakadepress talaga yan. Daig pa niya ng mga impact kung tumitira sa iyong puso, pag punong-puno ka ng ganyang emosyon. Jesus came to set people free from ungodly religious laws, abusive oppression and control by religious leaders, personality damaging religiosity. Meron talagang ganyang brand of religiosity ha, nakakasira ng personalidad. Yung dating masasayahin ngayon, bigla na lamang laging malungkot. Yung dating friendly ngayon, laging hostile and galit. Yung dating malaya ngayon, nakatali, nakakulong. So, nakakasira ng personalidad pag pharisaistic, pag lagi na lang law, pag lagi na lang punishment, pag lagi na lang guilt. That's why Jesus came. To restore personalities that are twisted by religion. Sabi niya sa Matthew 11, 28-30, Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Saan niya napagod? Sa religion, ng temple, ng sinagog. Ano ang burden nila? Yung law. Anong rest ang ibibigay ni Lord sa kanila? Emotional, mental rest. And even physical. Kasi ang daming sacrifices at ang daming trabaho sa kanilang relihiyon. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Sabi ni Jesus, Learn from me, not from those teachers of the law. For I am gentle and humble in heart. They are not. Lagi nila kayong pinaparasahan, inuusig. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Ano akala ng iba dyan? Ang teaching ng Matthew 11, 28 to 30 is about physical pagod. No, it's about emotional and spiritual pagod because of oppressive religion. John 10, 7 to 10. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. So, pag sinabi niya, I am the gate for the sheep, ako talaga ang dadaanan ng mga tupa. Lahat daw ng nauna sa kanya were thieves and robbers. Ano yon? Mga nauna ng religious leaders. Yung system. 
thieves and robbers ang tawag sa kanila ni Jesus kasi ninanakaw nila ang buhay, ninanakaw nila ang sigla, ninanakaw nila ang saya ng mga tao at pinapatawan lang nila na kutakot-takot na gawain, kutakot-takot na utos at kutakot-takot na judgment. Lugi ka pag napasali ka sa kanila. Sabi ni Jesus, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved from want and also to be saved from such religion. You don't save people only from hell. You save them also from religion that makes their lives like hell. At sabi ni Jesus, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will go in and go out. It means there's freedom. And they will find pasture. There will be satisfaction. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And this thief is the old teachings, the old teachers. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Kaya dumating si Jesus para bigyan tayo ng pahinga from oppressive religiosity at bigyan tayo ng buhay na masagana, masaya, malaya na magmahal, makipagmahalan, umibig at malaya sa kontrol ng mga religious leaders. Bakit siya ipinadala ng Ama? John 1.14 The Word became a human being and lived here with us. That is Jesus. We saw His true glory the glory of the only Son of the Father. From Him all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. In other words, galing sa mga ibang religious leaders, hindi dumadating ang kindness and truth of God. It's only from Jesus that the kindness and truth of God had come down. In other words, many religiosities, religions, religious teachers have been misrepresenting God. Presenting a very bad image of God. A God that is angry, always punitive, always may tantrum, magagalitin. So, ipinadala ng Ama si Jesus para sa wakas ay maipakilala siya ng tama at wakasan ang baluktot na pagpapakilala sa Kanya ng mga religious leaders. Kaya pinatay nila si Jesus. Listen to Jesus. Listen to the new teacher and the new teaching from God. Kaya nga may New Testament eh. Pero kahit naman sa New Testament, maraming backslide yung mga ibang tao sa loob niyan. Binalik nila yung Judaism, ibinalik nila yung maraming elements of the law. Kaya kailangan salahin sa Jesus filter. Pero paano tayo mag enjoy ng detoxification, ng bagong spirit, ng bagong kalayaan, at bagong pusong umibig at may bigin? Payapa, tahimik, malaya. Matthew 9.17, sabi ni Jesus, no one pours new wine into old wine skins. The wine would swell and burst the old skins. Then the wine would be lost and the skins would be ruined. No, new wine must be put into new wine skins. Both the skins and the wine will then be safe. Ang wine kasi nung araw inilalagay sa mga leather na mga balat ng hayo. So pag bago yung wine, dapat bago rin yung leather. Sabay silang tatanda. Pero pag bago yung wine, new, old yung leather, pagka nag-ferment yung wine, sasabog yung old leather. Matatapon yung leather, matatapon din yung laman, sayang lang. Pero siyempre hindi man wine and leather ang pinag-uusapan dito, kundi new teaching, new thought, new way of looking at God, new way at looking at spirituality and godliness. Yun ang dala ni Jesus at ang kailangan na bagong wine skin ay bagong utak, bagong korte ng utak, Bagong paraan ng pag -iisip. Hindi pwedeng si Jesus ilalagay mo lang sa lumang paraan ng pag-iisip. Hindi pwedeng lalapit ka kay Jesus, tatanggapin mo si Jesus, papapasukin mo Jesus sa puso mo. Pagkatapos ang style mo ng religiosity, old style. Yung puro law, puro legalism, puro punishment, puro usig, puro pambabato. Hindi magkamatch yung dalawa na yun. Pareho lang masasayang. Jesus comes with the new wine meaning new teachings. We receive the new wine with new wineskins, meaning with new minds, with new mindsets. Kaya ang sabi ng Romans 12 too, don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to Him and what is perfect. Akala ng marami pag sinabing, 
do not be like the people of this world. Eh, yung mga people na mga uminom ng alak, yung mga people na mga, may mga relasyon, yung mga people na mga immoral. Ang tinutukoy dito yung people of the old world, old temple, old religion. Yung pinalitan na ni Jesus. Niya, huwag kayong maging tulad nila. Payagan nyo ang just na palitan ng pag-iisip nyo sa loob ng pagbabagong loob nyo. Doon nyo palang maintindihan at matatanggap ko ano talagang gusto ng Diyos para sa inyo. And then, makikita mo kung anong mabuti at kaibig-ibig kung ano yung dalisay para sa iyo. So, huwag tularan yung old way of religion, yung old way of thinking ng mga Pharisees, teachers of the law, na lagi na lamang nagalit ang Diyos, lagi na lamang ito kasalanan, yun kasalanan, ang dami-daming utos, opres ng opres, kawawa ang mga tao, sabi palitan yung pag-iisip nyo. Hindi pwede yung paghaluin yan. Test teachings that needlessly scare, enslave, control, and fill you with guilt and fear, which is 99% of how religions go. Diba? Puro pananakot, Puro pang aalipin, pang alila, pang utok. Puro pang control. Tapos, after everything, guilty ka pa rin. At takot ka pa rin. Lugi ka. Baka galing sa old teachings and old teachers pag ganyan. Baka old wine. Kaya ang sabi ng John 10, eh, All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. Sino ang tinutukoy niya? Yung mga religious leaders who have come before him. In And by Jesus, be free from impure spirits. Salain, suriin ko anong efekto sa inyo ng inyong religion, ng inyong religiosity, ng inyong religious membership, ng inyong church. Kayo ba'y nakakalaya o lalong natali? Kayo ba'y nagkaroon ng kapayapaan o lalong natakot? Kayo ba ay tahimik o lagi, lagi nilang na-vexed? Napalayas ba ang mga impurities o nadagdagan pa? Mag-isip-isip. Bisa ka lang mabuhay dito sa mundo, kailangan tama ang sinusundan. Si Jesus, huwag Pharisees, huwag teachers of the law. God bless us all.